Hello everyone, welcome to our channel IAC Steno. We are starting the passage at speed of 100 word per minute. Start. Sir, we in parliament are being asked to endorse the proclamation. At the same time, we have not been furnished with the report which the governor had sent to the president. Now, how can we give our verdict on a matter of such importance until and unless all the material facts warranting the proclamation under Article 356 of the Constitution are placed before us. Yesterday, the Honorable the Home Minister said that this report contained only certain facts and figures with regard to the party positions in the dissolved Andhra Assembly. In that case, what is the objection to placing that report before us? It would not give us anything particularly new except certain arrangement of figures made by the governor of Andhra with a view to advising the president as to the course he should take. We submit that his report contains something else. It was the duty of the government to place the entire report before us for the closest possible scrutiny and the most meticulous examination by members of this house and of the other house because this report lies at the bottom of the whole thing as far as the constitutionality of the action of the president is concerned. Therefore, I submit that a flat of the executive is sought to be endorsed by parliament without telling us the grounds on which that fiat had been exercised constitutionally, this is improper. Then, sir, the president also says that he had considered other information received by him. We have not been told yet as to what was this other information, neither have we been told about the source of such information. I do not know exactly on what basis the president applied his mind to the subject. We know that we cannot make any reflection on the president. He is a very wise man and wiser still. By virtue of the occupation of the presidency. But I think we can call in question whether his mind had been rightly applied in a matter of such great importance and national concern. Our contention is that the president has not been in a position to apply his mind fairly and squarely to this subject because the report which had been submitted to him had been perverse, distorted and false. Our contention also is that the other reports which had been submitted to him are not fully objective and truthful. This we are in a position to say all the more because if the case for the government was so foolproof, Dr. Kadju would have been the last person to withhold his report from us. I think that something is wrong in the reports and maybe the members of this house having looked at the reports would have discovered certain facts which do not go to justify the case that the government has sought to make out in support of the proclamation apprehending 
such a possibility i think dr karju has thought it wise to withhold this report from the house having done it he asks us to endorse almost blindfold a measure which is described as undemocratic even by certain members of the congress party many constitutional points have been touched it has been sought to be made out in this house that this is the best democratic step that the government could take we say this is not at all a democratic step which has been taken we are supposed to have a parliamentary system we must have our own conventions we have got our own constitution but we are told time and again in this house and in the other house that there are the british constitution and their parliamentary practice which one should imitate now imagine a situation of this sort in england would the crown have taken such a measure at all if a certain party had been voted out of office by the opposition i think in a comparable situation there the king would have inevitably called the leader of the opposition to explore the possibilities of forming a government without doing it he would have never taken recourse to extraordinary measures like this if this method had been resorted to in the united kingdom a serious constitutional crisis affecting not merely the internal politics of the parliament but the political life outside would have ensued in france for instance there are many parties no party by itself enjoys an absolute or a comfortable majority what happens their ministry is formed and there we find the president takes upon himself the responsibility of exploring ways and means of finding whether any particular party or any leader of any party is in a position to present a government which would command the confidence of a certain majority in the chamber of deputies without resorting to that objective test he does not take recourse to extraordinary measures in the present case i say this objective test has not been at all applied one may or may not have certain feelings stop